Okay, so in our video series of dermatology crash course, in this video, we'll be talking about bullous pemphigoid. Bullous pemphigoid is an autoimmune disease in which body's immune system destroys its own cells, its own structures, hemidesmosome. Autoimmune destruction of hemidesmosomes, hemidesmosome is a structure that holds the cells of the skin attached with the basement membrane. If that hemidesmosome is destroyed by immune system and detachment of the skin cells from the basement membranes leads to the formation of blisters. To understand hemidesmosome, we need to understand the structure of skin. Normally, cells of the skin are attached with the basement membrane by a structure called as hemidesmosome. And the cells on the top are attached with each other with desmosomes. These hemidesmosomes are basically the glue that holds the cell attached to the basement membrane. What happens in bullous pemphigoid is antibodies are formed against hemidesmosome. Whenever antibodies destroy hemidesmosomes, these cells detach from the basement membrane. The skin detaches from the basement membrane. Like this, hemidesmosomes are destroyed and the cells are detached. The cells on the basement membranes are now not attached to it. That leads to the formation of bullae and blisters. This is a picture of bullous pemphigoid blister. That's how the skin has detached from the basement membrane and fluid has accumulated in it. This is a histology picture of bullous pemphigoid. When you take a biopsy from the lesion of bullous pemphigoid and you look it under a microscope, you see this. Now, this is the basement membrane and see how the skin layer has detached from the basement membrane. There is a space between the skin and the basement membrane and this is where the hemidesmosomes have been destroyed. Another technique that is used for the detection of bullous pemphigoid is immunofluorescence. What we do in immunofluorescence is that we take a stain, stain that binds the antibodies that destroy hemidesmosome. Since hemidesmosome are present around the basement membrane, so antibodies will also be present around here. And stain will bind these antibodies and give a bright color in a linear manner, in a linear fashion, since it is present around the basement membrane, since it is present on the basement membrane. So you will see a picture like this where immunofluorescence will be present over the basement membrane in a linear pattern. This is a picture of immunofluorescence. And if you see, this is the basement membrane and this is all the linear pattern of uh, immunofluorescence under the white line that you see in bullous pemphigoid. And this is that detached skin. This is the skin that has been detached from the basement membrane. And this is a space between them that is filled with fluid and formed a blister. So this was immunofluorescence in bullous pemphigoid. Bullous pemphigoid usually occurs in elderly patients aged 70s to 80s and the causes are usually drug induced. It is mostly caused by sulfur containing drugs, penicillamine and furosemide. Clinical findings of bullous pemphigoid include that these blisters are very thick walled and they are very less likely to rupture. So the Nikolsky sign is negative. What is Nikolsky sign? As we discussed in our video on Pemphigus vulgaris, where the Nikolsky sign was positive, Nikolsky sign is a sign in which you touch the blister skin slightly, that blister ruptures very easily. The skin can easily be pulled off. But in uh, bullous pemphigoid, the skin cannot be easily pulled off because there is a thick layer of skin that is present above the blister that is connected with desmosome. Unlike Pemphigus vulgaris, where the topmost layer was destroyed, leading to weak blisters, weak bullae that easily rupture by touch. In bullous pemphigoids, the blisters do not rupture with slight touch. They are thick walls and Nikolsky sign is negative. Oral lesions are rare, unlike Pemphigus vulgaris, as we discussed in Pemphigus vulgaris, that oral lesions are very common. In bullous pemphigoid, Oral lesions are very rare. So these are three main differences that we talked about between pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. One, that it is a bullous pemphigoid is mainly found in old age people, while pemphigus vulgaris is more common in youngest. Oral lesions are more common in pemphigus vulgaris while they are absent in bullous pemphigoid. And Nikolsky sign is negative in bullous pemphigoid, while Nikolsky sign is positive in pemphigus vulgaris. Check out my video on pemphigus vulgaris for further details. 
Infection is less likely in bullous pemphigoids since the blisters do not rupture easily and do not get exposed to bacteria. Diagnosis of bullous pemphigoid is made on biopsy in which you see either a histology picture or you do immunofluorescence staining and staining is around the basement membrane. Treatment of bullous pemphigoid since it's an autoimmune disease you need to give glucocorticoids to suppress the immune system prednisone is given or you can give a mixture of tetracycline with erythromycin plus nicotinamide. You can use topical steroids in bullous pemphigoid if no oral lesions are present. In summary, we talked about autoimmune disease bullous pemphigoid in which hemidesmosome are destroyed leading to formation of blisters. Clinical findings include Nikolsky sign is negative because these blisters are thick walled and they are less likely to rupture. Diagnosis can be made on biopsy, immunofluorescence. Treatment is usually with steroids and topical steroids can also be used if no oral lesions are present. So this was bullous pemphigoid. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on dermatology crash course. Thank you very much.